another week, another week of absolute frustration. Nine and seven in my picks last week, which was not much better than week three. Which puts me at 35 and 28 and one on the year. Which is still at 54%. And I have wanted a double digit week so badly this season. I've never struggled with picks like I am this year. I usually have at least one or two 10 plus weeks by this time in the year. But the fact I don't have one yet is really frustrating getting to me. But it is a new week. So maybe this will be the week that things finally start to turn around. 16 more games to predict this week. And next week, the bye weeks begin. So without further ado, let's get to the week five NFL predictions. As always, we begin with Thursday Night Football. And this week, Thursday Night Football features the Colts and the Broncos. And there are injuries all over the place. For the Broncos, we know Javante Williams is out for the year. Melvin Gordon is banged up. We saw Mike Boone get more work in the fourth quarter. Russell Wilson has a bit of a shoulder injury, but his his status for the game on Thursday, it's looking like he is going to play without a doubt. Unless something drastic happens in the next 48 hours, I expect Russell Wilson under center for the Broncos. And for the Colts, running back Jonathan Taylor has what is considered a high ankle sprain. And Jonathan Taylor has never missed a game in high school, college, or the NFL. And that streak is in jeopardy. And if I had to guess, it is going to come to an end. Even if he does play in this game, I do anticipate that he is going to have a limited role in this Colts offense on Thursday. We are going to probably see more of Naeem Hines and he'll get a bigger role in this offense, not only for this week, but perhaps in the next few weeks. But I had a hard time deciding who to pick in this game. And also the Broncos, they are down Randy Gregory for the next few weeks, one of their best pass rushers. But I am going to pick the Broncos to win the game, however. I think that this is going to be pretty average for a Thursday night game. I hope that we get a good one, but I just feel like I can be more reliant on the Broncos and the Colts right now as far as their injuries are concerned, because I do anticipate Melvin Gordon's going to get the lead back role, like get more touches, get more shares in this Broncos offense. And the Colts losing Jonathan Taylor is more detriment than the Broncos losing Javante Williams. So I'm going to go with the Broncos in this matchup. The second of the three international games this season, the Giants and the Packers. The Giants are 3-1 and one to begin the season. And I did not expect to be saying those words at week five while the Packers they are on a three-game winning streak ever since being absolutely obliterated in week one by the Vikings however the Packers they had a narrow escape against the Patriots on Sunday afternoon with third string quarterback Bailey Zappi the Giants are having a good season so far and Saquon Barkley he has shown that he is back but I just think that the Giants, I think it's going to be a bit of a reality check here. I can't see the Giants defense keeping the Giants in this game against the Packers like the Patriots defense was able to on Sunday. So I am going to go with the Packers in this matchup. We saw Romeo Dobbs establish himself as the wide receiver one in this Packers offense right now. As many people, including myself, thought it would be Alan Lazard, but it has been Romeo Dobbs. 
but Alan Lazard is still going to get his work in the in the offense. But I would not be surprised if this game was a close one again for the Packers. Because the line, it started off at 9.5, and, and now it is down to, I believe, 8. And it'll probably go down to maybe 7.5 or even 7 by kickoff on Sunday. Next up, we have the Steelers and the Bills. We saw Kenny Pickett get into the game against the Jets. He ran for two touchdowns. He threw three interceptions. However, two of them were tipped, and one was the Hail Mary at the end of the game. So overall, I would say it was a pretty good performance for Kenny Pickett, given the circumstances. And he goes on the road to take on the Bills in his first NFL start. And I question, is 14 points enough to give the Steelers a chance to cover? Because right, that is what the line is right now. Kenny Pickett's first college football start at Pittsburgh. It was against the number two ranked team at the time, the Miami Hurricanes. And he led Pittsburgh to the upset and ended Miami's national championship hopes. I think the Bills, they do win this game. They We saw them come back against the Ravens, down 17, come back and win the game. I think the Steelers will surprisingly make this game close. I don't see the Bills winning by more than 14, believe it or not. I think the most the Bills will win this game by is 10. Because I think this defense, despite not having T.J. Watt, as T.J. Watt is a big presence in the Steelers' defense, I think they'll be able to stay in this game. But I will go Bills, but I think Steelers cover, honestly. Next up, we have the Chargers and the Browns. And I had a hard time deciding who my pick was to win this game. When we saw these two teams face off last year against each other, it was perhaps the best game of the regular season. A high-scoring affair. Defense was non-existent in this game. But these two teams are completely different than a year ago. I think this is going to be a much low, lower scoring game than last year's game. And I really thought about picking the Browns because the Browns, they probably honestly could be 4-0 at this point in the year. So the Browns may be 2-2, two and two, but they are a pretty good team for being 2-2. Two and two. They just couldn't finish against the Jets and they couldn't finish against the Falcons. I like the Chargers to win this game, but I do think the Browns, they are going to once again be competitive in this matchup with that running game with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I think they'll be able to keep the Chargers offense on the sidelines for quite some time. But in the end, though, I do like the Chargers to win a one possession game, which is not that common with them, as they always struggle with one possession games, but I think they'll get this one done. Next up, we have the Bears and the Vikings. And there is just one thing I have to say about this matchup. Justin Jefferson is back. He had a dominant performance against the Saints in London this past Sunday. And after two bad performances, I think it's safe to say that Jay Jets is back for the Vikings. I think we'll have another big performance this week. And I like the Vikings to win this game pretty easily. The Bears, they have surprised me a little bit this season. But I just think that they're getting back to reality here. So I will pick Minnesota as Kirk O'Connell, I think it I think this is a confidence booster for the Vikings as he's getting, he's finding ways to get Jefferson more involved as he was really struggling in the last two games. But I think the Vikings roll the bears here. Next up, we have the lions and the Patriots and it's unknown who's going to play in this game and who isn't. 
For the Lions, we don't know if DeAndre Swift will be back this week. We don't know if Amon Ross St. Brown will be back this week. We don't know if DJ Chark will be back. For the Patriots, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. Will it be Brian Hoyer, who left the game early against the Packers with a head injury? Or will it be rookie quarterback Bailey Zappi, who in his first NFL action last week took the Patriots to overtime against the Packers in Lambeau? I think no matter who the quarterback is for the Patriots, I think they will win this game. The Lions, they have the best scoring offense, but the worst scoring defense. And the last team to finish the season with the best scoring offense and worst scoring defense was the Rams in 2000. Plus the Patriots, they play a lot better in Foxborough than what they do on the road. And this is reminding me of the Cowboys game last year against the Patriots. The Patriots, they got off to a slow start during the season. And then they played the Cowboys. And then they lost in overtime. But it did generate some momentum, some confidence. And I think the loss last week to Green Bay is going to generate some confidence as well. I think the Patriots win this matchup. I think behind their defense... And behind a big game by Ramondre Stevenson and Damian Harris. Although, I do think eventually we'll see Ramondre Stevenson take over as the RB1 in New England. Dolphins and the Jets. The Dolphins are the more rested team having played on Thursday night. While the Jets, Zach Wilson came back last week and he led the come behind win against the Steelers. The Dolphins will be without quarterback Tua Tugavailoa as he left the game with a head and neck injury. And the Dolphins, I think they are in for massive consequences for what happened to this game. But that is another topic for another day. But I said I would never pick the Jets to win a game until they can show me they can win games. The fact they have the comfort behind winning against Cleveland and the comfort behind win last week against the Steelers, the Jets have shown they're capable of winning games. So I am going to go with the Jets in this one. I just don't know what to expect out of the Dolphins with Teddy Bridgewater under center. The Dolphins' defense is an underrated defense, as we saw them hold the Bills to just 17 points. But I'm still picking the Jets. I just think that there's something different brewing with the Jets. In their defense, I think one of these days has the potential of being a top-five defense in the league with how they drafted their defense in the draft this April. Falcons and the Bucks, and I never thought I would make this statement, but this game is for first place in the NFC South after Week 5. The NFC South has been struggling so bad this season that a game between the Falcons and the Bucks determines first place in the NFC South after Week 5. And the Falcons... They have been impressed me the last couple of weeks. In fact, they've impressed me all season, kind of. 
if only they could have just made those adjustments needed in the fourth quarter. Just take that fourth quarter away against New Orleans, and the Falcons are in first place right now in the NFC South. Nearly beat the Rams. The Rams have been struggling this season so far. So the Falcons are another team that could be 4-0 right now, maybe even 3-1. and But I do think the Falcons are going to get back to reality here this week. I think the Buccaneers are going to dominate in this game. Tom Brady struggled in the first three games of the year, but last week, I think Vintage Brady is back after the performance last week. He's got his weapons back. Mike Evans was back from suspension. Chris Godwin played for the first time this season, but he left the game, but returned to the game. And Leonard Fournette has stepped up in the Bucks' offense recently. So I think the Bucks are back. And I'm picking Tampa Bay to absolutely dominate this game and take sole possession of first place in the NFC South. Next up, we have the Titans and the Commanders, and I am just going to keep this one simple. It's a battle of two quarterbacks that are washed. Ryan Daniel and Carson Wentz, both washed. I've seen Commanders fans want Taylor Heineke. I've seen some also want Sam Howell. But I feel like Sam Howell won't appear until later on in the season when the Commanders are out of playoff contention. And I'm honestly just going to go with the Titans because the Titans, they've at least been well the last couple of weeks. The Commanders, just the last couple games have just been absolutely atrocious for them. So I will go with Tennessee. Derrick Henry, he has put up better performances in the last couple of weeks compared to the first two weeks. While... The Commanders looked good in the beginning of the season. They just have really just fallen on the deep end at this point. Next up, we have the Texans and the Jaguars. The Texans got dismantled by the Chargers last week, but it appears they found a definite RB1 of the future in Damian Pierce. While the Jaguars, they competed really well against the Eagles. In fact, I said they were going to, but then the later on the game went, that was when the Eagles were going to show that they're the better team. And that's exactly what took place. And the Jaguars over the years, they've been the Iowa State before Matt Campbell of the NFL. A team that was not a good team at all. A team that everybody knows is a bad team, but they're a team that, if you're not careful, they'll get you. And we've seen the Jaguars almost pull off massive upsets. We've even seen them pull off massive upsets. And I think the Jaguars win this week, as I think there is some confidence after competing really well with the last undefeated team in the National Football League. So I'm going Jacksonville. Next up, we have the 49ers and the Panthers. For the Panthers, Baker Mayfield is still going to be the starting quarterback as Sam Donald is not even close to being ready to return to action. And we know Matt Corral is on season-ending IR. And I don't know if the Panthers still have P.J. Walker on their roster, but something tells me if they do, we'll see P.J. Walker at some point in this game as Baker Mayfield has been atrocious all year long. And for the 49ers, injuries are starting to pile up on them again this season. We've seen this last couple of years now. The 49ers, they look like a team that can be NFC contenders. And then injuries start to pile up. And then they look bad. And then they start to get healthier. Then they look like a team that nobody wants to play as they establish themselves as one of the best teams perhaps even the best team in the NFC, and perhaps even Super Bowl contenders. And the 49ers Jimmy Garoppolo are a much better team. I mean, you gotta, you feel bad for Trey Lance, but Jimmy Garoppolo gives the 49ers the best chance to win week in and week out. 
And I am going to go with the 49ers, even though their injury is starting to pile up. The Panthers' offense, with the exception of CMC and DJ Moore, it's just absolutely bad. Next up, we have the America's Game of the Week on Fox on Sunday afternoon, the Cowboys and the Rams. And I will be honest, I was a bit indecisive on who to pick to win this game. Dak Prescott wants to return for the Cowboys this week after missing the entire year after the first week with a hand injury. But the Rams... For Super Bowl champions, for the reigning champs, they have looked terrible. Only scoring a total of three points in the fourth quarter this season. And I will say this. I thought that if Dak Prescott was going to return to the Cowboys this week, the Cowboys would win. And even if he didn't, Cooper Rush is undefeated. He's 4-0 as an NFL starting quarterback. But if Cooper Rush is indeed the quarterback in this matchup, this is his toughest opponent in his NFL career. We're talking the reigning Super Bowl champs. And it is only a matter of time until the Rams finally figure it out. And I think this is going to be the game where they do figure it out. I think the Rams win this game. And I think it's going to be a confidence booster for them moving forward. But if Dak plays, I would still lean towards the Rams winning, but I think it'll be a lot closer if Dak plays. I do think they might have Dak sit out one more week because it might be in the best interest of the Cowboys if he does. Next up, we have the lone remaining undefeated team in the NFL, the Eagles, going on the road to take on the Cardinals. And I'm going to say it right away. I'm calling for the upset. I think the Cardinals hand the Eagles their first loss of the season behind a big game from Hollywood Brown as the status of Darius Slay is unknown in this matchup. And if you ask me, I find the Eagles relatively overrated at this point in the year. As if you look at their upcoming schedule, their next few games, Cardinals this week, which I think is going to be the first loss of the year for them. But if it's not, I mean, the Cowboys possibly without Dak, depends on if he returns or not. The Steelers, Texans, Commanders, Colts, Packers, Titans, on the road against the Giants, the Bears, Cowboys and then host the Saints, and then the Giants to end the year. So, there are Eagles fans out there that think they're going to go 17-0. But I can guarantee they won't. I guarantee the Eagles lose at least, at least three games, maybe even four games. And this will be one of them. Next up, we have the Bengals and the Ravens Sunday Night Football and I want to see how the Ravens come out in this game. Blowing a 17-point lead to the Bills. Instead of taking the opportunity to take the lead late in the game, they decide to go for a fourth and goal. Lamar Jackson throws an interception in the end zone, and it leads to the Bills' game-winning drive. And the last thing you want to see when you lose a game in that kind of fashion, a team next on your schedule that beat you down twice the season before Joe Burrow in the two games against the Ravens last year two of his best performances in the regular season in fact two of his top three performances from the regular season last year were against the Ravens in those games he combined to throw for nearly a thousand yards on that Ravens defense now granted the Ravens defense the Ravens as a whole was just hit with so many injuries last year. I still think the Bengals win, but I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. But I think the Bengals, they come out on top. And finally, Monday Night Football, the Raiders and the Chiefs. And this pick is an easy one for me, so I'll make it quick. The Chiefs have the Raiders number. Patrick Mahomes is 7-1 and one in his career, against the Raiders. 
and the Raiders just picked up their first win of the year against a Broncos team that has struggled offensively all season long. And the Chiefs had a big bounce back performance against the Bucks on Sunday night. And I also want to point out that Mahomes is also 6-1 and one on Monday night games in his career. And that does count that one game against the Bills that got moved to a Monday due to you-know-what in 2020. So...